We are at the Institute on the Formation of Knowledge, part of the University of Chicago, at my art installation, Cycles of Memory. The piece which is at the very top of this uh, three-story installation is called Donelaitis, to honor Christianos Donelaitis, the author of the first literary work in the Lithuanian language. Two thousand and eighteen is the one hundred year anniversary of the Declaration of Independence of Lithuania. So it's a very important year. My own ethnic background is Lithuanian. I grew up in Lithuanian household speaking the language, and we still speak Lithuanian at home with my wife. So to honor this country and its cultural background is a very appropriate thing to have as part of this installation here at the University of Chicago. The cycles of memory cycle back. The 100 years ago, the key person was Dr. Jonas Basanavichus, the architect of Lithuania's independence. He was a physician, but also for many years worked to raise Lithuanian consciousness for an independent country. His name is the first name that appeared, was written on the Lithuanian Declaration of Independence. In 1927, when he passed away, the country declared five days of mourning in his honor. That's how important and significant a person he was. The piece behind me, which is rotating, it deals with Donelaitis. It is hung from the third story interior. It rotates at three revolutions per minute. It is eight feet tall, four feet wide, on semi-transparent material so that you see it whichever way it rotates. It includes words from his poem that he wrote called Matai, The Seasons in English, from a section called Rudenske Ribes, Autumn's Delights. Cycling back in time even further, we go back 200 years further, we cycle into the mid-1500s and Martinus Majvidas, who published the first book in Lithuanian language, a catechism. He, just like Donelaitis, were Lutheran priests, and in the year 1561, in the inventory, the city of Virbalis, which was an uh, inventory that was done for taxation purposes, was a resident there, as were at least six other Proplis households. This is where the first time in history where the Proplis surname appears, and it's very clear that this is the origin of my own lineage. It comes from this area, from this uh, city in Lithuania. I'm standing in front of the lot which was owned by Moteus Proplis. Right across the street, I'm standing where the location of the house where Martinus Majvidas lived. So they were just across the street from each other. Majvidas' gardens were right next to other Proplis gardens. His farms were right next to other Proplis farms. So they were very, very close acquaintances. And I'm certain that at that time, the Proplis family members were probably all Lutherans because of that uh, closeness uh, to Martinus Majvidas. We can now cycle back in time even further, several thousand years, more than 3,000 years ago. And this incorporates theories by Jonas Basanavichus. Besides his other accomplishments, he was an archaeologist and his excavations in Lithuania produced a lot of material which are in the museums in Lithuania right now. He had a theory which he announced and promulgated which was, uh, which was not accepted at the time. The Hittite language is the oldest known Indo-European language. The Hittite Empire was from about 1800 to 1200 BC in central Turkey. The Lithuanian language is the oldest spoken Indo-European language. Vasanavich's theory was that when the Hittite Empire collapsed around 1200 BC, that portions of the Hittite world, along with Thracians and Phrygians, to escape the war-torn territories, moved straight north and were settled in the Baltic areas. That's where Lithuanians originated. 
So that was his theory, and based on that idea, I did travel to central Turkey, took many photographs of the archaeological sites of the Hittites, and these images underlie the lettering in the piece that's rotating behind me. I do a light as photographs of the uh, uh, Hittite ruins along with the archaeologists working there and myself and my wife. We've cycled through memory, we've cycled through time going back thousands of years, and then recycling back up to the current 2018, we are in the United States. We're not in Europe, in Lithuania. And I wanted to incorporate in this installation from this particular vantage point, memories of people here in the Midwest. Donalaitis's writings deal with the common person. He did not write, write about aristocrats, he did not write about rich. He wrote about the serfs in the middle of the 1700s and the suffering that they went to in their daily lives. It was a notable accomplishment. Serfdom at that time was just a scratch above slavery, and that's what the first Lithuanian work of literature is about. The Midwest souls includes pictures of people from the 1800s whose names we are forgotten to history, but we know from the photographs that were taken, location, the photographic studios, and this is an attempt to bring back into memory some of the individuals who are local to this general area whose memory now has passed away. So in conclusion, although the entire installation of Cycles of Memory is a complex one involving many, many different elements, at the top of it are the words by Christianus Donalaitis commemorating the birth of the Lithuanian nation 100 years ago. <laughs>